that system. We are actually only going to hire about 140,000 people for address canvassing, but the, uh, the demand for jobs has been so huge that we have had over a million applicants. And right now we have got about 10,000 people in the, that are getting paid through this system. And uh, in another couple of weeks that will jump up by about 140,000. Um, how much money were you given in the stimulus plan? We were giving, uh, given $1 billion. $1 billion? $1 billion. And what are your plans for spending the additional money you were given in the stimulus plan? Um, the whole focus of this is a good, to do as good a job as we can improving uh, the count. And the, uh, the bill language uh, directed us to focus that money on enhanced and improved advertising and partnership activities, and that certainly is our intention. We also hope to invest additional uh, monies in our coverage follow-up operation, uh, adding about another million to the workload, and then the remainder of the funds would be, uh, would be there to support key 2010 activities. But in the short term, in terms of 2009, uh, uh, the expenditures will be primarily focused on expanded media buys and advertising and our partnership program. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the remaining money to make uh, other choices, what is your basis for making these choices? Do you have an analysis of what needs to be done or other areas that you need help and support to make a more accurate census? Uh, our criteria ha have been to focus on that ac those activities that will contribute uh, the most to the to the census. And actually, we've provided a plan to the Office of Management and Budget in terms of what our focus is, and we're awaiting their response at this point. Okay, thank you very much. And our time is my time has expanded as uh, is, is no thank longer. You. I've used up my time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so you for all your hard Ms. work, Maloney, I now go to the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, for uh, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Messenberg, are you you're a career civil servant, correct? Yes, I am. Um, with more than adequate funding, do you believe the Bureau has the talent and capability to oversee a professionally implemented and successful 2010 Census? I do. Um, I would like your opinion as the Census Bureau professional on an important matter. You are currently operating without a presidentially appointed uh, Senate confirmed director, correct? That is true. Do you believe the Bureau has the talent and expertise to continue planning for and implementing a successful 2010 census without a presidentially appointed Senate confirmed director? Well, I am doing two jobs at this point. <laughs> and I, and I, I guess I, what I see my job is right now is to continue to execute the plans to conduct a successful 2010 census. I have no ambitions to be permanent director of the Census Bureau, uh, but my job is to keep that train moving down the track so when we do get a Census Bureau director, we are in a better place than, than we were uh, you know, before. But do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the talent and expertise currently in, in place right now to execute? I, I believe we have the talent to keep the train moving down the track. I'm not going to take a position whether we should uh, uh, have a director or not have a director. We've always had a director, <laughs> and I, Fair would, uh, I think a director would be useful for us. Um, as you know, the uh, the results of the 2010 census are used for apportionment, redistricting at all levels of government, and the allocation of federal funds. All of this is correct, right? That's true. So in your opinion, is it better to conduct a census that is free from political influence or do you think politicians should be telling you how to do your job? Well, the Census Bureau, uh, in my 36 years, we have always acted, uh, we have made decisions, technical decisions and program decisions on the technical merits of the issues. We have not made decisions based on uh, any kind of uh, political pressure. That has been my experience over 36 years. In the, uh, the census is based on the Constitution, correct? That's true. I don't. Do you recall which article or whatnot? 
Uh, That's right. embarrassing That's to say one. not. <laughs> Article 1 of the Constitution deals with the powers Article of Congress, one. the legislative branch of our government, correct? True. So regarding anything having to do with the conduct of the census, it should be the Congress that has the authority and jurisdiction. Do you agree? Well, you're getting me into uh, territory I'm not a skill, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an expert on. It's clear the Congress has a clear, uh, has a responsibility to oversee our operations. Yes, I would agree with that. How, um, how will the Bureau protect the integrity of the census from outright fraud? From, I'm sorry, outright? Just outright fraud. What, what, what protectors are in place to make sure that that doesn't happen? We have, uh, we have a whole series of uh, quality control operations that we have in place that, uh, that check uh, the operation. So, for example, when we start address canvas, well, I'll give you a, a better example. Right now, we are uh, about 90 percent done with the large block enumeration. And after that, we're all, now we have started to send uh, QC people, other enumerators out to check the quality of that work. And that is the test. Every operation that we do will have a QC uh, operation attached to it. And that is going to be, um, that will be one check. Another check in terms of housing unit counts and person counts will be our POP estimates program that makes most of those. That is another quality check that we have. So you have, if you have an enumerator, enumerator who fraudulently fills out data and then, and then submits these facts, do you believe there is a check and a balance in place? I to, do to believe deal with that we have a, a check in place that will uh, identify that problem. Um, yeah. What is it to keep somebody who is, uh, gets in the form the mail, it gets the form in the mail and then knowingly fills it out incorrectly? I mean, grossly incorrectly. What? How do we deal with that? Well, there'll be some. Uh, There'll be some additional checks against some administrative record uh, information that we have access to, uh, but that's going to be very, very difficult to catch every every one of those if a person added a, an extra individual uh, in the process. But we will we will do some re-interviewing there. So if it's systematic on the part of a numerator, then we would catch it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Messenburg, let's let's um, go back to the operational control system. Uh, the OCS is the brains of the whole system of the field operations. When will end-to-end -end testing for the OCS be in place? Okay. Uh, the the actual the first testing will be done uh, April 20th through May 1st. Uh, so what we have done because of the timing pressures that we are under, we are going to address key operations on an incremental uh, process. So the actual final testing will, be not, will not be done on all of those interfaces until next March. Mr. Pounder or Mr. Golden Carver, is that uh, adequate as far as the, uh, the uh, response to, to, to ensure well, I, I think the key, it's, it's, a, it's a tough challenge for them because not everything's in place. So part of what they're dealing with is you want to test what you have now, but I think it's very important, as was stated, that you come back and retest. The key here, though, is there's a lot of, the, there's a lot of this, this, these examples in place. We have six major systems. We heard 244 interfaces, 44 operations. Okay, so when you start looking at all that, getting it all done and testing it in an integrated fashion end to end as you are asking, Mr. Chairman, you see, we don't see all the prioritization and the plans in place. So going forward, what is very important is that we see the appropriate plans, but then we have key metrics so we know exactly what is done, how well it is done, and then what remains ahead mm -hmm. to complete. Uh, and, and the OCS is just one example of many challenges that they face going forward between now and Census Day. Okay. Uh Mr. Golden Kopp, the, uh, the Bureau has many challenges facing its final preparations and con conduct of the uh, 2010 decennial census. Uh, what do you think places the 2010 census at greater risk and uh, what can be done about it? I, I think 
The, the really two great, great risks. Um, one, time is running out. And two, um, the lack of testing of key operations. So as was already stated here today, the Bureau needs to prioritize um, what it can do, what it can't do, um, figure out where, you know, within all those uh, different operations and activities that haven't been tested, where the Bureau is most vulnerable. Um, and secondly, make sure everything stays on, on track. Um, a third area um, is perhaps more um, marketing and, and promotion because the non-response, uh, or the response rate rather, um, is, is key to success. You know, address canvassing uh, is set to begin nationwide within a few weeks. Um, the Bureau never was able to carry out an end-to-end -end test of the new handheld devices with all other procedures in the field. Uh, how prepared is the Bureau to conduct address canvassing and how can the Bureau be confident that everything will work as the Bureau hopes uh, without having tested it all? Well, I, I think that's, you know, the Bureau does, does not know what it doesn't know because, again, the lack of testing. They, they had the operational field test in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and what that demonstrated was that under the conditions in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the handhelds functioned uh, well. Uh, the, pro the problems that we had seen in earlier tests did not reemerge. Um, the problem is, is that, obviously, the country does not all look like Fayetteville, North Carolina. You have urban areas, you have more rural areas, and so the question is how will those handhelds perform, for example, in um, an area with lots of skyscrapers? Um, will they be able to lock on to a satellite signal? Will they be able to transmit data? Um, so, and that's what nobody really knows. It, it is a big question mark. Should, uh, should we be worried about the census being conducted on time? I think that it will, you know, it come April 1st, you know, forms will go out by law if they, they need to. Um, the question is really accuracy and, um, and quality uh, of, of the sense, accuracy and cost rather. That's really what it comes down to. Key operations, they will get done. They need to get done. It's just a question of how much will things cost and how good will the results be. Okay. The, at the end of the day, the data need to be delivered to the President come December 31st. Um, uh, 2010. 2010. Uh, um, so whether they need to compress operations or um, speed things up at some point, um, that's they, they are under the gun. And so you know things will happen on time. It's just a question of you know cost and accuracy. Sure. Thank you. Uh, when the census, Mr. Powder, when the Census Bureau provided comments on the GAO's report, it stated that it was putting much more focus on testing new things for 2010 and not testing things that have worked before. Uh, what is GAO's assessment of the Bureau's comment? Uh, we would not agree with that. It's important, uh, clearly it's important to test new things, but if you have old things that are critical and you change software and hardware associated with that, that needs to be tested. That was really the focus of our report. It's really based on a prioritization. So the prioritization might be new things, but it could very well be older things also. Thank you for that response. And I, I will recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Westmoreland, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just following up on uh, some of the comments that the gentleman from Utah had, uh, Mr. Mor Morsenberg, what quality controls are you going to have on these enumerators? We, uh, uh, gentleman from Utah, questioned about them filling out the forms wrong. But what kind of quality controls do you have on these enumerators? Okay, every every major operation we have um, we have a QC activity related to that. Uh, so we'll actually go take a sample of the enumerations, and we'll have a different person go back and attempt to collect that same data. And that provides us a, uh, uh, a, a clear signal in terms of the quality. Uh, if there are issues uh, related uh, to a specific interview, we call that operation a re-interview operation to identify problems. Uh, if we identify a problem, then we will zero in on that uh, enumerator and then do a 100 percent check of all of their work. 
but every operation we do, we are going to have a QC step built into it to check the quality of it. Okay. And let's say that you do correctly identify an enumerator. What kind of corrective actions would be, could be taken? Uh, they could be terminated. Uh, and certainly they would be out of the enumerating uh, business at, uh, as soon as we identified that. Okay. Uh, I know that the Bureau, as you have mentioned, uh, will automatically mail a second census form to these uh, traditionally, I guess, hard to count areas or the no response. Uh, that is correct, right? You will do a second mailing? Yeah, second mailing, a uh, blanket second mailing to areas that have, that have a traditional very low mail response. We will do a blanket mailing and then we will have another group that is uh, sort of intermediary, possibly under 50 percent. Then we will mail the non-respondents, the, the households that hadn't returned a form will get a form there. Okay. So you feel comfortable that you are going to hit these under response areas very well? Uh, with a second mailing? We have tested the second mailing during the decade. Uh, we used it during the dress rehearsal. Uh, we are confident that it will be beneficial. So you believe the second mailing is going to enhance your response? Yes. How will you ensure that the data capture isn't wrongfully counted twice for those that return forms from both mailings? Now, what what's your system in place there to check that? Okay, in terms of data uh, data capture, forms will come uh, will be returned and go through one of our automated uh, three data capture systems. They actually do OCR on the forms. Then we will do uh, a matching operation. Every form will have a unique 22-digit identifi identifier on that. If we can't match, that generates a whole host of additional uh, investigative work. Okay, so, so we have an automated process to make sure that we are not getting duplicate returns in. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Goldenkopf, uh, do you believe that uh, because of all the stuff that we have been hearing in the news about we need a director, we don't have a director or whatever, you and Mr. Uh, Prowler, do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the right talent in-house to oversee this 2010 census? The Bureau employees, they are extremely dedicated, extremely competent, um, and they have lots of experience. Um, the concern is, is that here it's getting, you know, with 10 yards to go until the goal line, census day, um, there's no permanent quarterback in place. And the other issue to consider as well, you know, not only who's calling the shots, who's being held accountable by Congress um, to the American taxpayers. Um, this is also the time when the Bureau starts planning for the next census, the 2020 census. And so you need somebody in place who uh, will take on, who will be responsible and held accountable for that as well in making those sorts of, of decisions. So clearly the competency is, is there. There's, there's no question about that. We've seen it in past decennials. But we need someone who is a strategic leader um, and someone who is, you know, goes through the conventional selection process. Okay. Um, given that this short form, and it's only a short form for the census, um, do you think that better equips the Bureau to conduct this census than in previous most Simmons. definitely. It, it, it should improve the response rate because it is less burdensome than having a, a short form and a long form. I mean, the back in 2000 um, studies have shown that the response rate to the short form was higher than to the long form. So, you know, you are more willing to spend 10 minutes than 40 minutes on, on the right. long form. So it makes it a important. little easier for them to fill it out. That is correct. And, and probably not as uh, deep a questions or personal questions as it was. But is my time up, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Westmore. I recognize the gentleman from Utah for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Pounder, do you believe that there is uh, enough talent to uh, oversee and conduct the 2000 Census? From a technology point of view, and for 2020, the Census Bureau needs more IT talent on board, clearly. Uh, if you look at what happened last summer with FITCA, the FITCA problems, uh, fortunately we have organizations like MITRE. They hired some external folks to come in and help at executive levels. 
Uh, going forward, there's folks that are trying to do a good job there right now, but going forward, we need more IT talent internal to the Bureau. To, uh, like previous uh, uh, decennials, the, the Bureau is using paper and pencil for non-response follow-up. But unlike previous years, we have had better maps for enumerators, a targeted second mailing of the census form to the hard to count areas, and likely a better applicant pool from which to hire these enumerators. Shouldn't all these factors lead to more accurate census? Uh, yes, they, they, they should um, lead, lead to a more ac accurate census. Um, it's, you, you can handle the non-response follow-up workload faster, which, which is important because it reduces recall error. So all those things you mentioned should uh, lead to that direction. And if you could just summarize for me again real quickly, the major hurdles that you see and if any of these hurdles, uh, you know, what the consequences would be if we aren't able to overcome those hurdles? Well, first, um, time is running out. There's just no time for, for missteps. There's no slack in the schedule. So to the extent that challenges or or glitches emerge and those things are inevitable, something comes up in testing, there's not a whole lot of time left to figure out what, what the workaround is. Um, secondly, um, the population is complex, demographically complex, um, and so as we said in, in, in my statement that a key challenge is converting that awareness of the census into an actual response. Bureau has been very good in terms of getting the word out. People, 90% of the population or so, is typically aware of the census, but the re actual response rate is, is much lower. So that would be another hurdle. Would you concur or disagree that the, uh, the census is rooted in Article I of the Constitution, which enumerates the powers of the legislative branch? Oh, um, I will pass on, on that <laughs> one. I, will. I guess the, the, the question is, uh, who, who do you believe the census director reports to? Well, legally, um, to the Commerce Secretary, and that I believe is in, in statute. And is it uh, your experience from past decennials that the director often briefed the president but never, quote unquote, reported to him? Well, I mean, for what we've seen in news accounts and also from some experience during the Bush administration, um, there was some contact between um, the census director um, and, and the White House, OMB. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we've reported here today the census. But communication is a little different than actually reporting right. to. Right, and they're, they're two different things. It's one thing for the White House to um, be aware of and, and make sure that the census stays on track, but it's that is not a reporting relationship. Um, but in terms of um, holding the Bureau accountable, it's a very powerful tool um, to have White House involvement. The thing is that the, the White House, it has to be that right balance between focusing on management and operational issues versus the science of the census. You don't want the White House or any political influence um, on the science of, of taking the census. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just one, one question for, for Dr. Himes. Um, you know, the, the Bureau is working with MITRE on uh, mitigation plans. Um, what are your greatest concerns about um, timetables and the plans? So I think, again, our, our, uh, our greatest concern would be uh, those that GAO has, has put together, that um, the time to test and verify uh, where the systems are working, uh, particularly from a, uh, a system view. So we think that um, uh, there are tools in place that give census better insights into uh, the status of their systems than they've had in the past. And um, the people that are working on them have uh, uh, substantial experience. Uh, but it's still a fairly large burden considering the amount of time uh, remaining to track that whole activity end to end. Thank you so much for that response, Dr. Hand. I'll yield uh, to Mr. Westmore. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. I just I didn't have any other questions, but uh, when Mr. Goldenkoff passed on the uh, Article One of the Constitution question, I felt like we might want to discuss that a little bit further. Uh, that the GAO understands uh, that uh, we feel like the census. The origin of the census is rooted. Oh, that no question. Article yeah, one, in, section in, in two. Article, Maybe I misunderstood you know, the, the, the question. In Article one of the Constitution, then 
which enumerates the power of the legislative branch. And so, yes. you know, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that and you were just passing on the question maybe for. No, it, I guess I, I misunderstood yeah. the question. I, I, oh, I apologize. Okay. But definitely, yeah. it's Article 1, Section 2, and that spells out the basic uh, requirements and, and, of the census. And, you know, I think, uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would like to just make a, just a comment, if I could, that we all understand how important this census is uh, for redistricting, for the um, uh, allocation of federal money. And uh, I'm very pleased with the testimony that we've heard today because I think that uh, everybody on that panel wants to have an accurate count, an enumeration of everybody in this country, people who were here at the time of the census. And so I think that's the reason that, you know, there's been so much uh, uh, about, you know, whether the White House wants to have it reported to or the uh, Commerce Secretary, uh, there is or is not a director. I feel very confident from just the information I've heard from uh, the Census Bureau and, and the acting director there and from the GAO and the things that they've looked at that this process is going forward about as well as it could and that there's been a lot of hard work uh, put into it. And so I think that the reason there's so much going on right now is everybody wants to make sure that every person is counted. And so um, I appreciate all of you coming. I want to thank the chairman for having this hearing because I think he recognizes the importance to each and every one of us and the fact that we get a very accurate count. And so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd yield back to balance my time. Thank you, Mr. Westmoreland. And, uh, you know, in, in conclusion, let me thank the witnesses for their testimony today. If I could ask just one. Oh, you chairman. have another question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll yield <laughs> to Mr. McKinley. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to get this on the record, uh, Mr. Metzberg. <clears throat> From the Census Bureau's perspective, and I, I'm sure you'd, you, these are questions you'd like to answer. Uh, any and all the information obtained from the census forms cannot be used uh, for any other purpose, including tax or law enforcement purposes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Many of us have received feedback from our constituents regarding privacy concerns. Obviously, very, very, uh, very much in, in mind today, especially. But information given by people to the Census Bureau is confidential by law. Is that correct? By law, by Title okay. 13. All right. Um, and the main challenge is, uh, well, getting people to respond is one of the main challenges, yeah, as you mentioned. So um, is there, because people maybe have a mistrust of government, um, what efforts are you taking to ensure that, uh, that people know that any information given to them, uh, giving given to them is uh, kept only within the Census Bureau and not shared with any other government agency, department, or any other, any other individual? Well, that, that information will, will be on the report form that everybody receives, but probably more importantly, it's going to be a key focus of our advertising message and our partnership program. So it's one thing for the Census Bureau to tell people it's confidential in the uh, hard to reach segments of the population. Our partnership program is aimed to get a trusted voice in that community to tell people that live in that community. And our partnership specialists will be hired from the community that they're working in, that you, you can trust uh, the Census Bureau, uh, that they'll hold your data confidential. Certainly. And finally, if um, uh, you and your staff could uh, prepare a follow-up for this. This is uh, too long of a question. Our time is short. Um, I, I'd like to know the Census Bureau's full plan to minimize the undercount and overcount. Uh, and I know you already have plans in place, but if we could uh, receive that, I think that would be important for committee members to hear the, the full breadth and depth of your plan. And so we can also uh, see ways that we can engage other stakeholders. And certainly. And, Thank you all, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very I certainly good. appreciate Very it. Very good. Thank you. And uh, the the first major um, operation of the 2010 Census uh, address canvassing begins on March 30th. Uh, there will not be any other opportunities to build a complete and accurate address list. Uh, time is of the essence. 
Uh, it is critical that the Bureau work with GAO, uh, MITRE, and use every resource available uh, to get this right. Uh, six major systems still need to be tested. The life cycle cost estimate needs to be validated uh, and, and testing must be prioritized. Uh, let me thank all of the witnesses for coming today uh, and, and thank the members of this committee for their singular focus uh, and, and their commitment to seeing uh, that the 2010 census uh, be successful. And on that note, uh, this hearing is adjourned.